Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Lima Widmer, and I am the VP of Market Research here at SUSE. Um, and I will be uh, hosting along with Mackenzie, who's Director of Qualitative here at SUSE, and Leah, who's our Senior Product Manager, who's been our partner in crime and helping build out all of these features that have enabled qualitative in this virtual and agile environment. Um, as VP of Market Research, I lead the Center of Excellence, which includes both the quantitative and qualitative divisions. And I'm very excited to talk with you today um, about qualitative specifically. But before we do, just a quick um, moment on SUSE. For those of you who aren't familiar with SUSE, we are a qualitative and a quantitative platform that's integrated into a consumer panel um, that really does make executing market research very uh, cost efficient uh, and agile and iterative for uh, clients. And so knowing that we're gonna dive right in um, and focus our the next you know, 40 minutes or so specifically on qualitative research. And so, I'm going to just take a step back and talk about the, the research process in general and how qualitative ladders into that. Clients often come to us with a business question uh, and for shopper and category manage, management teams in particular, a lot of the questions are, are around you know, what's driving preference? What's driving preference at point of sale? How do you tailor offerings uh, and communications to specific segments? I have one highlighted in yellow here, what drives specific ret retailer preferences for a category. Um, we're gonna carry that theme throughout the rest of the conversation. And so you'll hear Mackenzie talk about the tactical execution around that kind of business question. And then Leah will demonstrate how this actually um, gets treated post field work. So that hopefully you can understand the process and the thinking. Um, but ultimately, when clients come to us, we have to help them unpack, you know, how they should think about executing research. Is it quantitative? Is it qualitative? Or do I consider a mixed method approach? And so at a very high level, you want to think about quantitative if you're looking for structured data driven, a data driven approach, right? Something that's going to rely on survey execution something that's statistical, projectable, um, and that you can analyze by sub-segments and subgroups and, and populations, right? If you're looking for trends and patterns and relationships and data. You wanna to lean toward qualitative research if you really want to do a deeper dive into consumer behavior and emotions, right? Um, if you really wanna uncover rich insights, um, the second bullet under qualitative I think is so important because very often we'll suggest some qualitative component if we wanna get behind the why people do the things that they do. So very often quantitative data gives us the what, what proportion say this, what proportion feel this way. What qualitative does very successfully is help you go deeper underneath the why uh, behind those quant numbers. And there's, you know, a handful of qualitative methods to choose from, you know, focus groups, in-depth conversations, observations. We'll talk a little bit more about that. In this virtual environment, COVID has forced qualitative um, really into virtual as opposed to in-person. And so at SUSE, we do focus on virtual qualitative offerings, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But ultimately, qualitative is your go-to macro approach if you're really trying to understand motivations, preferences, and perceptions. So if we're thinking about our illustrative example, what drives specific retailer preferences, right? As a client, what you wanna ask yourself is what information does your organization already have? What are the gaps in understanding? Um, and, do, and do you wanna address those gaps really in a quantifiable structured way? Or do you want it to be a little more flexible and adaptive? Um, and so 
when I'm thinking about scoping out a research um, or a learning plan for a client, if I'm leaning toward qualitative, it's often because I hear them talk about wanting to challenge or build upon their current understanding of their customers, their retailer relationships, whatever it may be. So are they looking to do some foundational or exploratory work, right? If they're trying to get underneath emotional um, and motivational triggers, right, in the decision-making process, or even just understand a decision-making process and the nuances and the complexities um, around that, that will lean the scale toward qualitative, right? Um, the other piece that I really do like qualitative for is to have it as a quantitative complement, right? Um, and so I mentioned earlier about getting underneath quantitative data, but there's so much value in bringing the voice of the consumer to life for internal stakeholders. Historically, just in, in the quant world, they're often done through verbatims, right? But what qualitative does is it really supercharges those verbatims, right? Um, and brings uh, a perspective to internal stakeholders that may somehow be missing if they're not hearing directly from consumers. In doing qualitative through the delivery of the results and through video, which Leah and Mackenzie both are gonna talk about it, video is such a powerful tool to help drive organizational alignment around topics, right? And there's so much value in that alone. And we'll talk about and show you some examples of how powerful video can be, but it also helps put an exclamation point on a finding or a learning, not in your own language, but in the language of, of consumers. And that gets to that last um, box on the right-hand side, which is harnessing consumer language, right? So what quantitative can't do uh, to the degree that qualitative um, can do is really help hear how people describe their experiences, their pain points, their surprises and delights in their own language. And clients can learn from that um, in helping craft, you know, claims or package design or communication. But even simpler than that is you can take this qualitative learning to help guide and inform survey development so that you can make sure that you're being holistic in how you're measuring um, on the quantitative side. So an incredibly powerful tool, um, I think, and Mackenzie will talk about this a little bit, some of the reasons why clients don't do qualitative is that there is this um, ambivalence about getting started if they've never done it before. And so hopefully we'll, at, when we're done with the session today, you'll feel empowered to dive into your very first qualitative project. And if you're a qualitative seasoned professional, it just reinforces what you already know and, and the strength of qualitative. The critical piece before kicking off a project is to focus on the core business question that you're trying to address, right? And so the SUSY team can help you translate that business question into a research objective, right? And so why this step is important is because we wanna make sure we operationalize what we're trying to solve for, right? And that's where the articulation of those objectives has to be done in a way that's measurable, right? And so measuring the success of the research project is contingent on how well those objectives are defined. And the SUSY team on the quant side, on the qualitative side can absolutely help you do that. Um, and that will also set you up for success and make sure that you're considering not only who your audience is that you're talking to qualitatively, right? But also what are the component pieces of research methods that are in my toolkit that I should be using to answer that objective? Do you want to have just a conversation with people or do you want them to do a homework assignment? For example, you can send people out and have them shop at a specific retailer within a specific category and document their experience. So there's all kinds of ways to leverage qualitative for um, incremental supplemental um, support for different answering some of these objectives, or you may want to just complement it with 
a quantitative survey, which is very easy to do on the SUSE platform. So before I hand it over to uh, Mackenzie, you know, on the quantitative side at SUSE, there's, um, you know, quite an array of different types of research that you can execute from, you know, simple online surveys to MaxDiff, TERP, driver's analysis and segmentation, right? So putting quant aside for a minute, on the qualitative side, and I think it's important to mention here, in our, in our environment, we talk about qualitative at, at SUSE as SUSE Live, right? So the reason it's live is because you're talking to people in, first, in, in real time over um, a digital environment, of course, but they're, they're live, they're face-to-face. -face. You have an opportunity to be adaptive in how you execute and ask questions and probe. And, you know, a great example is I've often seen after a handful of interviews or a focus group or two, there's a couple of aha moments with clients in our virtual back room, right, where they go, wow, we hadn't really thought about that. Let's pivot or let's, you know, really blow out this part of the discussion discussion guide that we've crafted. So it does allow you the opportunity to be adaptive and flexible in, while you're in field and executing. The types of methods we have within our SUSE Live umbrella include in-depth interviews, which are sometimes called one-on-one -on -one interviews, dyads or triads, that's where you have two or three participants um, at one time. And there's you know, very specific reasons why you would set it up that way. You can go to focus groups and Mackenzie will talk about the difference between in-depth um, interviews and focus groups. Also, there's in-home usage tests, which are called IHUTs and video open ends, which we're gonna spend a little bit more time on. Mackenzie, over to you. Great, thank you so much, Lima. So I wanted to take you all through how we think about how to enhance the qualitative experience here at SUSE. Our goal is to make qualitative as simple as possible for our clients and partners. Um, and that all starts with having quant and qual in one system. So the quantitative rigor that you get from our core SUSE platform can have a qualitative depth um, really simply and cost efficiently. And it allows clients to iterate faster and create really robust selling stories, uh, you know, for retailers, for their clients, for their stakeholders, both internal and external. Um, showreels in particular are a really great way to, uh, you know, share out your findings and really bring your consumers to life. So when we think about qualitative, we want to make it as simple as possible. And really, it can all be boiled down to five steps. Uh, you scope out your project and define your objectives, needs, and audiences. And in the example Lima provided, uh, we want to know in this instance about what surprises and delights shoppers at retailers and how what drives their decisions to uh, purchase a certain category at a certain retailer. So once we've aligned on the scope of the project, Susie manages all of the screening and scheduling of participants. So we go out and we survey panelists to find those who qualify, and then we contact them and get them scheduled, which also includes a rigorous quality process um, to make sure that you are getting the best quality possible out of your interviews. Uh, then the interviews or groups are conducted, uh, and you know we summarize key findings and define recommendations and next steps for potential follow-up research. So these are things that Suzy can manage on behalf of our clients if that's something that's needed, um, because you know if you are not a seasoned qualitative researcher, it can seem overwhelming and more manual. Uh, that is why we are here to help. So when you're thinking through what type of qualitative project you want to have, uh, you're asking yourself, do I want to do interviews or focus groups? And there's a few things that you want to think about uh, when deciding what the right methodology is. Um, interviews allow you to get deeper insights, more granular and intimate details with each participant, and you typically end up interviewing less people as a result. 
Um, I'd say this is really great for user or usability testing. Uh, it's ideal for really sensitive topics that may uh, be uncomfortable to talk about in a group situation. Um, and also ideal for harder, harder to schedule respondents because there's a lot more flexibility in when they can uh, participate in an interview. And depending on the target audience that you've identified, we recommend five to 10 interviews per cohort. And then for focus groups, it's really all about a broad range of insights. Uh, so you tend to get a wider scope of feedback. Uh, one of the great things is that participants can interact and bounce ideas and build off of each other. So I find that focus groups are really great for creative development um, and early concept exploration. Uh, focus groups are also great if you are short on time and you need to uh, hear from consumers as fast as possible. And the thing is, it definitely requires a strong moderator to make sure that you're hearing from everybody throughout the group as equally as possible. You don't have someone co-opting the conversation and trying to avoid that group think dynamic that can sometimes come out. And we typically recommend three to four groups with four to five participants each. So, you know, in the example of wanting to understand, uh, you know, what drives retailer preferences, you may want to choose IDIs so that you can get really granular with each one of those respondents. And the other thing that makes Suzy Live really special um, is our proprietary audience. So that allows for really precise targeting, powerful retargeting, uh, speed, and then we have quality control measures as well. Um, so because we own our own audience, it allows us to be much more faster and agile uh, when it comes to recruitment and scheduling of responses. And we also uh, have much more of a hand in individually checking and vetting with each one of these uh, qualified consumers. And we really never want to compromise quality, especially when it comes to things like interviews or focus groups. Uh, the clients, the moderators, they are taking time out of their day. It is important that we are finding the right people uh, for this project and the objectives. Um, so we have a whole variety of automated quality checks, but we also have ongoing manual moderation through things like, you know, our census program. Uh, we have a suspicious, uh, like, you know, pattern, uh, you know, piece that we take a look at. So there's a few different things that we do, and that is a big part of what we do in trying to make our clients' projects successful. So now I'm going to kick it over to Leah, who's going to give you a demo of the Suzy Live platform and also show you how show reels can really uh, enhance your sell-in stories. Awesome. Thanks, Mackenzie. Take over the screen share here. All right. So we'll fast forward to the end of your Suzy Live project, your post field. Now you're reviewing all of your recordings and your transcripts. Um, keep in mind, we want to make it so easy for you just to be able to review, find those key moments, and really be able to take those snippets of the voice of the consumer and use that in your uh, report, top line finding, or even your show reel, which we'll get to. Um, within the interview, you can share stimulus, which makes it great for conversation and getting the feedback that you need on said stimulus. Again, you have your transcripts here where you can easily bookmark and clip. Lima mentioned earlier that ability to have the back room where you can bounce ideas off of, or maybe you even totally need to pivot the direction of the conversation. All of that is accessible within the Suzy Life platform so that you can reference it to um, help shape your insights. So speaking of bookmarks and clips, um, one of our features that we just released to help with the storytelling of your qualitative insights is show reels. Um, sometimes it, you can lose somebody's attention within seconds. So Showreels has been a really great way to um, capture and tell the story uh, within a very engaging and compelling visually, visual way. Um, so let's pause here. Let's take a quick look at what an example Showreel looks like, and then we'll come back to take a look at the editor and how easy it is to make a Showreel. I uh, recently shopped at Costco and 
had to return something. I lost the receipt, but we took it and uh, tried anyways, and they were so easy, so great to work with. They uh, replaced it, no questions asked. I uh, recently went to Staples to look for an office chair, and uh, I was surprised about the level of customer service I received there. I haven't been to Staples in person in a few years, and um, I was looking for a chair, and they helped me package it up and move it out and um, get it to my car, so that was a nice surprise. I was currently at Kohl's and it was a really good experience. I got exactly what I needed. They have a new pickup service, like a Kia, where I don't have to wait in line, which really helps for when I just did a Kohl's pickup and I didn't have to wait behind everybody doing returns. I could just get what I needed and get home. So as you can see, showreels allow you to humanize your insights by bringing emotions and body language and even empathy to life. And here at Suzy, we think we've made it pretty easy for you to do that. Uh, so this is a look at our new showreel editor, uh, where you can see that we've already created um, a template for you to follow based off of different verticals. We make it really easy to just plug and play the different text that you need to write in, can easily swap in images and assets. We have all of our uh, a creative library here that's partnered with Shutterstock. All of your Suzy media is here. So this comes from your video open ends or your Suzy Live clips, again, from any of the qual that you've conducted within Suzy Live. And then each scene is almost as customizable as it is within a PowerPoint, I like to say. Um, so you can come here and you can change the different layouts to make sure that it's organized in a format that tells your story in the, in the way that you want it. Um, and then as well as easy as um, your video styles as well. So changing that font and the color palette, even the music to really make sure that it is aligning to your brand uh, theme and tone. All of that is previewable in the platform and then you can publish it, download it and share it however way that you need to. Lastly, we do wanna acknowledge that here at Suzy, we will soon be harnessing the power of AI into our platform. Uh, this will obviously supercharge the way that you conduct your quant and qualitative research, uh, but most specifically, we're uh, eager to be able to give you these the generative power of AI when it comes to your qualitative analysis. So stay, stay tuned for more updates uh, from Suzy regarding generative AI coming soon. All right, well, as we wrap up, I'm gonna have Lima and Mackenzie come back to join us to answer a few questions that we're seeing in the chat. Wonderful, um, thank you, Leah. Uh, and we are going to take a couple of questions. I've seen a couple that have come in. Uh, this one is specific, um, I think perfect for Mackenzie. The question is, I've never done qual research before. How do I get started? Yeah, so really I think that uh, the hardest part of qualitative research is getting started. It can seem daunting and overwhelming at first because it's a little bit more manual than quantitative, but I promise it is not that scary. Um, so as Lima talked about before, um, you know, it's really all rooted in what is your business problem that you're trying to solve and your ultimate objectives. When you have a clearly defined objective in mind, uh, you know, you can come to a qualitative research team like the one here at Suzy, and we can recommend the right methodology, whether it's IDIs, focus groups, maybe even dyads or triads. Um, if we recommend homework and, you know, we also recommend how we best screen for these consumers. How do we make sure that we're finding the right people for your research and what is that really going to look like? Um, and they can be the ones to really take you through it from start to finish and make it seem much less scary. Awesome. Thank you, Mackenzie. Um, this actually dovetails into uh, another question that I will be happy to handle, which is, can you give a specific example of how qualitative was used for a shopper marketing team, right? And I think that... Um, one that comes to mind immediately is uh, a specific client of ours 
who led the Shopper Insights team was struggling with translating global communications at point of sale for their product, right? And so what they wanted to do was to create um, an environment that allowed them to take these global communications and translate them in a way that was very retailer and very shopper specific and really have some best practices built out around, you know, developing or modifying comms for the shopper channel, right? And so in order to do that, we did a quantitative assessment of some global creative and complemented that with not only um, qualitative, which I'll talk about in a minute, but other kinds of uh, methods in the toolkit and that's heat mapping, right? Um, and so what that really allowed to do is to get the data around reaction to the communication. The heat mapping really measures system one impact around attention. We placed the comms in, um, in a, uh, in a, in a store uh, aisle so that it was really as realistic um, a situation as possible for respondents. And then we layered in video open ends, right, around what they liked about the comm and what they didn't like about the comm, right? Uh, and that was across different iterations of a specific asset, right? And what that allowed the teams to do was to really understand the results from a quant perspective in terms of the copy, um, but really get underneath the nuances around why this would or wouldn't work in the shopper channel, right? So a very, very clear application of video open ends to get underneath quantitative data um, to help the team navigate, you know, how do I ultimately do what I need to do in that sell product at point of sale, right? Um, so very clear example um, of how qualitative was used. Um, Mackenzie, this question may be good for you, um, but before I do, I may ask one of, of you myself, do you have any I, um, examples of where qualitative was used, focus groups or IDIs in particular, for a category management or a shopper insights team? Yeah, I'm happy uh, to provide an example. Uh, we had a client who uh, had a retailer specific offering um, and they wanted to understand uh, what was not interesting about the offering because it didn't perform as well as they had expected or hoped. Um, they had a feeling there were some external factors and some internal factors, um, one of them being how they uh, positioned the messaging on that, you know, landing page. And so we conducted a series of focus groups uh, with the desired target consumers for this offering um, who shopped in the category at that particular retailer to kind of uncover how they can better tailor that offering at that retailer for those people who are shopping there. Great example. Thank you, Mackenzie. This was a tactical one that I'm hoping you can answer. Um, this is specifically about how do I find the participants I need for qualitative? Yeah, um, that is a great question. And there is both an art and a science to it. Uh, the science part is really uh, the screener that we develop. Um, you know, after clients come to us and they define their objectives and their target audience, we build out a survey um, that really is a funnel to start consumers at the top and figure out who meets all of the criteria on paper for what we're looking for. And one of our favorite things to do is to pair that with video open ends. Uh, number one, it gives us a very clear sense of someone's articulation prior to showing up to an interview. And number two, it can add a lot of dimension to the project, um, and then it can kind of take that question out of your discussion guide for the interviews or focus groups. Um, so that way, you know, you can kind of pair those findings together and use it as a recruitment tool. 
Um, you know, then my team goes ahead, takes a look at who qualifies according to the screener that we ran. Um, and then we look for the people who are going to be the most articulate um, and have the widest variety of experiences within those parameters so that you can hear from, you know, a good breadth of experience. It's fantastic. And I think layering in video um, to help, you know, qualify respondents for IDIs or focus groups is such a powerful tool because as Mackenzie mentioned, you are as a client usually heavily engaged in these projects and you want to make sure all the people you're talking to really um, bring a lot of value to the conversation. Um, you know, and I, I don't want people to think about it as a way to screen out folks, but it's more to a way to guarantee the folks that are in there can really contribute and help um, unpack the answers to the questions that you're going to be answering during the conversation. Um, people are real, and we see people in a lot of different environments, um, especially when they're doing stuff from home, which I think really does provide a lot of, you know, interesting color to qualitative, but it also is, a, is providing a lens of reality. Um, and it does let clients look inside people's lives and look inside and talk to people um, who really represent their buyers or their prospects. Um, so wonderful question. Um, this is one last question that I see popping up, um, and we're, we'll definitely be happy to answer any more that you may have uh, at a later time. Um, but Leah, this one specifically, I think, good for you. Um, you had mentioned generative AI. What specifically is on tap uh, with regard to generative AI and qualitative? Yeah, that is a great question and happy to share more. We're really eager to supercharge our qualitative analysis with this, but um, in, in the simplest terms, it is qualitative summaries to start. Um, obviously, when you run an, a video open end or a Suzy Live project, you're left with lots of transcripts and, and lots of, of data to read. Um, we found that the AI is doing a really great job in being able to summarize, bringing out key themes or pain points or even action items and recommendations for follow-up research. So uh, we're currently right now honing some really unique and powerful prompts that will provide you with the summaries to really jumpstart your insights and analysis from your qualitative research. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, um, Leah McKenzie. Anything else to add before we close? Uh, the last thing that I will share is that qualitative research really does not have to be scary. Uh, just because it may logistically be slightly more challenging than quantitative um, is not a great reason, in my opinion. You can always find ways to slot it into your plans uh, if you're just thoughtful around uh, the best way to talk to these consumers that you have in mind. Wonderful. Thank you. Anything from you, Leah? I did just think of one thing I wanted to add anecdotally. Um, right after we released Showreels just a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a client success story shared that uh, a client shared their really short showreel about their product to a retailer. That retailer responded back within 15 minutes, scheduling a meeting with them. Um, so we were, you know, jumping up and down. We love to hear success stories like that. And I hope that Showreels could um, be that successful for, uh, you know, more clients in the future as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much, both of you. And for our audience members, we really value your time and appreciate you spending time with us uh, today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to um, us at Susie. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.